Time now, though, for the Marcus Hood Late, and you say we've got a uh, big expansion in motion for a Mississippi poultry company. That's right, Artist Sanderson Farms is growing west. Also coming up in the markets, we'll be looking at these stories for you. A recent USDA report confirms that cattle numbers will tighten. A new private estimate lowers 2013 planted acres in the U.S., and one analyst says a limited window for U.S. soybean sales exists. Laurel, Mississippi-based Sanderson Farms has announced it will start construction on a new chicken complex in Texas on October 1st. The feed mill, hatchery, processing plant, and wastewater facility will be located southeast of Dallas in Palestine, Texas. Full capacity for this plant will be one and a quarter million chickens per week for the big bone deboning market. Sanderson says the hatchery and processing plant alone represent an investment of $92 million. The facilities could employ up to 1,000 people. We shift gears from white meat to red meat now in the livestock sector. Since our last production, a new cattle on feed report was released. That was the afternoon of September 20th. On Thursday morning, Extension Ag economist John Michael Riley discussed his review of those new numbers as well as the beef sector in general. John Michael, any real surprises in this cattle on feed report? Actually, there was. Uh, cattle on feed, 9.9 .9 million head, down about 7%. Uh, while it was... Um, the it trend was, we expected, it, it I was, guess. Well, it was much lower than we, we expected. It was below the average of the, the pre-report expectations, and it was uh, barely outside the range. That's what was uh, getting me a little bit, barely outside that, the low end of the expectations. So, uh, yeah, it, that was a bit of a surprise. So, uh, overall, it just speaks to the tightening of the, the inventories of cattle on feed uh, now and moving forward. So this trend we've mentioned about uh, tightening is coming, supplies will get tighter, it's really kicking in right now. It is. We've seen drought that has kind of uh, alleviated some of those concerns in the past. We're not seeing that this year. Placements, two, two months in a row of double-digit drops in placements from year-ago levels. So uh, the, the tightening supply, it, uh, the, the sky is finally falling. Now how is that going to really manifest itself, you know, say here in Mississippi for the average producer for the cattle market? Well, we're already seeing higher prices uh, at the feedlot level. That's always going to trickle down uh, to the producer. So we should be seeing higher prices as we move into the fall as a result of tightening supplies. Just not a lot of feeder cattle out there, so the market's going to be trying to find them wherever they can. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that should help with our, with our fall prices, and especially as we move into the 2014 year, uh, should help with prices. At a time of the year when prices typically take a dip, the fall run of cattle uh, here in this state, people are, you know, a, a lot of folks are selling their cattle in the fall, which usually depresses prices. So that should be a bit of a, a, a good news as we think about it for Mississippi producers. And before we go, let me ask you about competing meats. How is that going to be a factor as far as the situation we have cattle supplies dwindling? Well, it, it, uh, we're seeing poultry production pick up, hog production just a little bit, although not as much as poultry. So there is an expectation that they're going to try to fill the protein gap, the fact that beef is not going to be as, as uh, uh, plentiful. But we are seeing beef demand stays pretty strong. 30 uh, uh, the cold storage inventories are shrinking a little bit from year-ago levels. So these, uh, the, the beef demand does appear to be holding up in, in light of the tight supplies. Before we look at the row crop commodity markets, let's give you a trivia quiz to be thinking about. And here's the question, how many people does the poultry industry employ in Mississippi? Your possible choices for an answer, 39,500, 47,000, 98,000, or 125,000, I'll tell you at the end of the markets. The Monday, September 30th grain stocks report could potentially spark some activity in the corn sector of the markets, even though the monthly report is primarily dealing with wheat, barley, and oat production. Analyst Alan Brugler says the October 11th federal crop production numbers are more likely to be a market mover for corn because the acreage may change. The big problem is just we know it's a big crop, plus or minus a couple hundred million bushels. The, the wild card is probably the, the planted acreage. Uh, we're fairly sure we're going to lose some planted acres by the time we get to October. Uh, and if you were, let's hypothetically, to take two million acres off, that, that would be th uh, 300 some million bushels. And it does change the equation a little bit. A private forecast released within the last week does, in fact, lower 2013 planted acres from the USDA's June estimates. Informa Economics estimates a decrease of 1.5 million acres in the U.S. corn crop and a drop of 391,000 acres 
in the U.S. soybeans. Now, as for the 2013 crop production, the private analytical firm bumps up corn production by 46 million bushels from the USDA September forecast. Soybean production, meanwhile, is also estimated to increase, adding 75 million bushels to the total. Looking closer at the soybean picture now, analyst Don Rose says the market fundamentals are just as tight as they were a year ago. Rose says the biggest problem is that South America has a huge crop, one that will be harvested in February. He cautions U.S. bean producers that they need to make sales within six months or less. What we're really doing is marking time. The U.S. producer has a six-month window to sell his soybean crop before we hit South America's harvest that's going to start in February. Without weather problems, they're going to have a huge crop. So for the producer, you know, the job of his market is to market soybeans with the inversion, with a tight basis, and not carry your soybeans into a, a, a declining market. An interesting development in the rice market to close out September. As expected, planted rice acreage in Mississippi and Arkansas is off from last year. Analysts say the Arkansas numbers, though, are the big news. Plantings of only 937,000 acres of long grain this year. Traders call this number drastically low and say it should have a positive effect on rice prices as competition, possibly from every state in the South, heats up for those limited rice stocks. Well, before a new feature story, let's check the trivia answer for the week. And the correct choice is B, 47,000 people work in Mississippi's poultry industry.